1836. The following morning, Covent Garden was wet gray against white clouds. And once or twice, as his eyes focused on the three stacked boxes of 36 Krispy Kreme donuts he was holding, Edward heard the slap and felt the piercing clutch of his feet landing in puddles on the periphery of seven dials. Robert had not been answering any of his calls, so he had decided to come to his burrow and chivy him out, as the saying went. What's in the bag? The woman on reception at the Cambridge Theatre must have been about 80, even after allowing for the ageing effects of the fags by her handbag. The general effect was mythical. They're donuts, Edward said, tapping the transparent window on the packaging. For the cast and crew and the director, Robert, he's a good friend. Specular memories of D'Angelo arriving for Robert at the Almeida Theatre shone back from the past. Robert Pepper? Her dark lipstick curled into a devilish smile and the whiff of old cigarettes adulterated the air between them. Then in you go, she said. Edward could imagine the effect Robert had on a person like, at a guess, Dottie. He passed through the foyer, downstairs past the stalls bar, down the dust-soaked stairs and into the theatre itself, in which Francis Bunderston, on stage, was advocating a kneel for a specific line. No, totally, totally, he was saying to Robert. No, I want it to be natural too. I always do. But if I, at this point, bear in mind the emotion, the, the overwhelming, he searched for the word, emotions, his voice became a theatre voice for the next lines as he demonstrated what he meant. Louder than the space required, too much of a gap between the words, end consonants vulgarly exhibiting themselves and a kind of jazz triplet rhythm polluting arbitrary phrases. I'll wipe away all trivial fond records, all sores of books, all forms, all pressures past and he whimpered and fell to his knees and said in his own voice to the director, and then I'm down, I'm, I'm kneeling for Christ's sake, I'm in complete subservience to the father. Also, don't forget, I'm eye height to the front row too, so they're suddenly, zam, they can see the whites of my eyes because that's why they're here, don't forget. And then, not my jurisdiction, but it's begging for a spotlight, Rob. People's knees do buckle, you know? It happens to the best of us. Robert nodded thoughtfully and convincingly. Love to work with someone who's got such a plethora of ideas, seriously. Let's see how that feels with the others, Charlie. A flurry of activity ensued in which a younger woman, Charlie, about 25, strode forward with a clipboard and made some notes as Bunderston paced at the far end of the stage, muttering his lines. With lazy athleticism, Robert hopped into the stalls to join the loitering actors, among whom he found Teal, who simpered and giggled at his instant badinage. Edward descended over cautiously to manage the slope towards the stage. Donuts, he said, but no one heard. He kept walking, past Robert in fact, and the general melee, and pushed the boxes slowly onto the stage as though he was trying to sneak them on without being seen. Donuts, an older actor said and everyone turned to Edward. Ed? Robert looked baffled and horrified, immediately putting some daylight between himself and Teal, which confirmed Edward's suspicions. Surprise, he said, noting that the voice was pitch perfect, just passing, and I thought, hey, isn't that where Rob's rehearsing? So I thought I'd drop these babies round. He thumbed at the doughnuts. The actors, accustomed to milling lackeys and unearned treats, paid him no mind whatsoever. They set upon the baked goods with loud guffaws, shrieks and unconvincing declamations about only having a half. Rob peddled a more hesitant demeanour. Well, mate, uh, thanks, yeah, uh, just rehearsing here, but yeah, uh, ta, uh, yeah, you met Francis? Yes, and Teal. Oh, yeah, playing Ophelia, big mistake. Teal stuck her tongue out and slunk off. Robert hugged Edward effortfully and slowly wandered off backwards down one of the aisles, 
smiling his invitation for Edward to join. All good, mate? Yes, yeah, no, I've been, um... Edward looked vaguely away up the aisle. How do you put tragedy into conversation? Sorry, I know. I've just not had a second to answer your calls. We went straight into a crisis meeting last night because one of the actors, well, sucked. And then we're still doing set builds and lighting and... Well, I barely had a moment to think. I'm sorry. And it's been crazy since the engagement too. The admin, all the bullshit, stands as keen to just do it. You get it done, you know? A Christmas wedding, which is great, but obviously the timing is shit with the play. Huh. Romantic attitude. Edward left the icing off his smile. Ha, huh. God, I know, but no, I'm obviously excited. It's just, um, well, splitting your brain in two with this stuff and that stuff. He gestured at the stage and out at the rest of the world. Are you OK? Uh, you wanted to chat. It's just, we have to talk, Rob. We have to.